Hello, welcome to the second episode of the Creative Rep, the first guest episode we're having, which I'm very excited about. These episodes are going to be pretty similar to the ones where it's just me, where we'll be discussing a certain topic or subject related to the creative process, and including some exercises and tips you can try out on your own. Only we'll be getting a bit of a new perspective, and you'll get to hear from some friends and some artists who I'm very, very excited to share with you. This week we'll be talking to Zoe Knight about tactile art and touching, and ways that that can become a very helpful part of the creative process. If you're more of a digital artist like myself, maybe spend a lot time on the computer, uh, don't click away just yet because I have a sinking suspicion that this episode might be particularly helpful to you. Thank you for your time and energy and I hope you enjoy. My parents collect Michael Haig picture books and he's a really big illustrator. They're super detailed and super minuet, like very teeny tiny details. So when they started being like, oh look at this Michael Haig book, I was like, why is it special? And it was, it's art. I am definitely both a writer and a visual artist. I view them differently. Writing is much more of a craft to me. I mean, I'm in school for it. I've been taking classes for it since I was 10, but it's also very much a part of how I communicate. And I think that's where they overlap, is the visual art and the writing is how I communicate. Because sometimes you just, there's just not words for things. I had a lot of creative energy that wasn't getting put into class so much. So I've been wanting to put this creative energy into something and I didn't want to write because I was writing for classes and I didn't want to read because I was reading for classes. The only option left for me personally was to make art. And that's when I started getting a lot more tactile with my art as well because I needed something more physical and more grounded and more in my face than any other kind of thing that I could do. The number one form of art that I do is collaging, which is literally, I just cut shit up and I put it together and I glue it down and then it's new shit, which is my favorite form of art, I think, because it gives me the most control and it gives me the most physical, emotional release. Because I, if I'm angry, I can literally just go chop shit up and then I've got my scissors and I'm like, ha ha. My mom got me and my sister this sketchbook for Christmas. It is part of the sketchbook project, which goes to the Brooklyn Art Library, which is basically you buy a blank sketchbook and you fill it up with whatever you want and then you send it to the Brooklyn Art Library and people can check it out and look at your art for free. I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself to make it like perfect. So it is also called a sketchbook project. It's not called like a portfolio project. It's not supposed to be an end goal. Sketchbooks are never an end goal. They're just a process. And so I want to capture my process in that. I think it's definitely giving people a bigger understanding of the artistic process and the choices that we make. The point of the project is to get a variety of art and a variety of perspectives on art in a library. But also libraries give a context much more of a public space and a free space, a space that is respected differently than say a bookstore because you know you have to bring it back and that somebody else is going to read it after you. So you want to make sure that you take care of the art. That context will be much more along the lines of getting to know individuals in a different way, in a way that's much more tangible also because you can look at it and you can flip through the pages. You can't, I, I want to touch stuff in galleries, unfortunately. I think that's the only reason I could never work in a gallery is because I'd want to touch everything. So you can touch this art. And you can look at it and say, oh look, my kid did this. My kid did something just like this. But then their kid's gonna see it and say, hell, that's in a library. I can go in a library too. I think art has been put up on a pedestal and created as sort of a religious deity that people are afraid to interact with. I think that should stop. I think art should go back to being something that we can touch. For me, art is supposed to be very much something that's supposed to be able to touch people and for people to touch it. Because you can't make art in a void, so you need to be able to be touched by things in order to touch them back. That's a lot of touching going on there. You know those oil paintings that are just really thick and gloppy? Yeah, I just want to touch that. That's why I finger paint, is so I can touch it. I definitely generally have a rule, like with creative writing, that I will not type it until I've written a first draft handwritten. Initial creative flow for me always comes from a handwritten tactile kind of thing. I think if I'm like struggling with a piece or like if I'm working on an, a visual art thing that's just not working, I'll try switching mediums. If I'm like, if I have a really good concept that's not working, like if I'm drawing it or sketching it and it's not working as that, I will 
turn it into a collage or I'll cut up the piece and turn that into a collage. Being flexible in how you use your tactileness. If I'm struggling with a writing piece, really struggling, I will turn it into a different genre. If I'm writing a personal essay and I'm, I'm just hitting a wall, I'll turn it into a poem. I will just go take the piece and add line breaks and make it a visual thing of what I'm trying to actually get at. So that way it's much more like this and this rather than this big chunk of words. So breaking things up helps me a lot. This is also why I cut up magazines and finger paint aggressively. So being able to be, consider myself a visual artist with collaging and finger painting and drawing, but also being able to be a writer who can work in any kind of genre, whether it be like public writing or technical writing or general creative writing, allows me to be much more of a malleable and applicable person when it comes to whatever work I'm doing. Hello again, Connor hopping in for a bit of an end slate. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little bit of something. Just letting you know, in case you didn't already, that I include links to pretty much everything referenced in these videos in the description down below. That includes some royalty-free music, that includes any projects that are talked about, any artwork you see or hear reference to, recent projects or a website of the featured artist if they have one, and any articles that I researched in the making of this video. So please check those out for yourself if you're curious about anything we talked about. Otherwise, I will see you next week for another video.